good evening, everybody. So uh, this evening we are presenting recordings that were made at Crichton, uh, at the Crichton campus in Dumfries. And I'm really pleased to have Professor Carol Hill here with us. Carol, do you want to just introduce yourself? Yes, I'm Professor Carol Hill. I'm the head of the School of Interdisciplinary Studies, which is based on the Crichton campus in Dumfries. And I've been here for some 20 years or more. Fantastic. And it's a really beautiful campus, isn't it? I mean, it's very green and... I think everybody who sees the campus falls in love with it. It's one of the most beautiful places in the south of Scotland, I, I think. Because um, it started its life as a, as a mental institution, a mental hospital. Um, so, and the grounds were kept by many of the patients who were in the hospital at the time. And it's just that since that, those days, the tradition has been kept up by the Crichton Trust and the gardeners with the trust as well. So, yeah, it's a beautiful place to be. Yeah, yeah, it's, it really is. And the choir, we've been visiting, um, well, every Christmas for quite a long time, I think. Oh, I, I couldn't really guess. Probably at least 15 years. I think at least 15 years. Uh, I remember saying one year it had been X number of years and a lady telling me off because it had been longer. So <laughs> I'm not going to commit, but it's at least 15 years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and in the last three years, we've also been visiting in May. In fact, we were due to be there last last weekend. So that's partly why we decided to do this concert this evening. That's great, yes. Yeah, so we're going to we're going to start with two pieces actually that we sang at Christmas concerts. The first piece was from December twenty nineteen, so the most recent Christmas, and the next piece from the previous Christmas, Christmas twenty eighteen. We begin with a setting by Ronald Law of a poem which is often simply known as Balulalo. This is actually a poem by Luther, which was translated into Scots and published in fifteen sixty seven by the Wedderburn Brothers. piece is a joyous Christmas motet by the English Renaissance composer Peter Phillips. It was published in 1612 in Antwerp, which is one of several places on the continent that Peter Phillips lived in exile.
So this evening's concert, as you know, uh, we're sharing, recorded, we made at Crichton Memorial Church. Um, now, we've been going there for quite a number of years. Um, I wonder, does anyone have any, any good, particularly good memories of, of our trips to Crichton? Um, it's really something that we always look forward to, um, going to Crichton now, almost, is it biannually, um, recently? Um, it's something that, one thing to look forward to, particularly at Christmas time, because we always go and give a concert at Christmas, um, and it's something that I always look forward to. <laughs> Thanks. It's really nice to go in the springtime as well, though, isn't it? Because then you're in daylight and you get to see the beautiful grounds. It's a lovely chapel to, to see the outside of as well as the inside. And we continue with two pieces recorded during our concert in May 2019. They're both by the Irish composer Charles Wood. The first, O Thou the Central Orb, is a popular anthem which sets a text by Henry Ramsden Bramley. The second is an unaccompanied setting in six parts of the Nunc Dimittis. <laughs>
we've touched already on how beautiful the campus is and the grounds and in the first video that we just showed we've put some photographs really just to illustrate both the chapel and the situation so you should have a good idea now of, of where it is i wonder whether we could just touch again a little bit on the history of the uh, of the of the the sort of the, the the campus so i understand it was originally a uh, used as a mental institution well, it, it, yes, it was. Um, Elizabeth Crichton, when widowed, was left considerable sum of money by her husband. And uh, her initial wish was to have the campus develop as a university. Um, but for various reasons, that wasn't, uh, that wasn't possible. So she turned her attention to a mental hospital. And it has to be said that the Crichton, I think it was the Crichton Royal Mental Institution, I'm not sure the exact name, uh, was one of the um, most advanced institutions of its time and there's a lot of firsts notched up there. Um, in the 1970s when the public policy became uh, to, pe for, to, to care for people in their own homes the institution was wound down and subsequently Elizabeth Crichton got her wish when it became a university campus with ourselves, the University of Western Scotland and others located on it. Um, I think we're the biggest institution on campus, university institution on campus now we have something approaching 450 students, postgraduates and undergraduates and research students, 60 staff, all highly qualified academics who live and uh, contribute to the region. And we develop, we actually deliver uh, 11 degrees in total. Wow. Um, which is, is quite complete significant. Programs. Yeah, complete yeah. programs, which is pretty significant given we've only been here 20 years. Yeah, yeah. And it does seem so appropriate that, that Elizabeth Crichton's wish has been has been sort of yeah. realised all the all the yeah. long time after she yeah. wished it. Yeah, and we have, you know, we have a new postgraduate de degree coming up in end of life studies, and we have a, a, an undergraduate degree in health and social sector leadership, both of which tie in, I suppose, with the health origins of the campus too. Yeah, yeah, they do. That's really, it's really kind of feels feels very very appropriate. That's full circle. So we're now going to hear uh, the university organist Kevin Bowyer playing a piece called Saraband by Anthony Baldwin. And this is a real favourite of, of, of Kevin, but particularly of the choir who very much enjoy him playing this.
And you'll have seen already from the pictures that we've shown of the of the church at Crichton, it is really a beautiful building and it's quite cathedral-like in its, in its grandeur. Um, as you, you've also heard, it's got a fine organ. Um, the, the, the space itself, it really lends itself to, to singing in different places. So at Christmas, we always start the concert from the back door. Um, and then we process into a carol. It's very, it's very, it's very, it's very nice way to start the start the program. And in May, we quite like playing with the space a bit more. So, for example, we've uh, we've stood ar around the audience, which can be quite big. So it means the choir are, are quite spread out. So we're very socially distanced, actually, at least two <laughs> meters between us. So, uh, um, but yeah, you, you've heard a few of those performances, I think, Carol. Oh, I remember one in particular. I think it was a Christmas concert, or was it a May concert? But when I think you, it was a May concert. Yeah, you you kind of just seemed to wander away from the front of the church, and and suddenly appeared all around us. And the music that came at us from all sides was just, it was, it was unbelievable. It was so so beautiful that it brought tears to our eyes. And and when you hear music like that, it's no wonder that the concerts. There's no charge, but the tickets are all gone on the first day they're out to offer. I mean, it's just a, a, an amazing experience to be in that church and to hear the chapel choir perform oh, in the way they do. It's, it's our pleasure to be there. And actually, that, that, that performance you're talking about is what we're going to end the concert with now. So this is um, Oliver Tarney's uh, setting of the Irish Blessing, that made the road rise to meet you. And it's uh, the particular performance that Carol's uh, referring to. We did stand all the way around the, the audience. Unfortunately, we don't have a video of that, but we do have some photos that were taken during it, which I hope will give you an idea. Um, and the recording it's, itself, I think you can hear that we're not perhaps standing as closely together as we might normally do. Um, and it, add, it does, I think, even, even just an audio recording, it does add something to the piece. So um, huge thank you, to, uh, Carol, both, to, for, both for having us at Crichton over, over all the years. And we, we're really looking forward to getting back and particularly for talking to us now. It's been really great to hear from you. It's been my pleasure. I look forward to the concert. <laughs>